every day. I would like to introduce our speaker this morning. Reverend Keith has a long connection to the spirit world. Some of his earliest memories of being a child and seeing and hearing people that were from beyond. It was the experience that made him want to learn more about this unseen world and spent hours reading about mediumship and spiritualism. For many years, Reverend Keith was in search of a church that was right. And once he entered the sanctuary at the Center of Enlightenment in 2006, he knew this was the place for him. Over the years, he has served on the board of directors in many roles, serving as a trustee, vice president, and president. Reverend Keith and his wife, Friona, were married in this very church in 2009. In February 16th, 2016, he was ordained as a minister. In 2020, he was appointed senior minister by Reverend Ken Novicheski. I am honored to be his first ordination, and I'd like to introduce to you and have you all help me welcome to the podium, Reverend Keith Thornton. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Spirit is a funny thing. I had all intentions of doing one sermon on uh, taking a break because this past few months has been kind of crazy and putting all the pieces together and uh, it just was missing that one little piece and I was just going to add with the whole thing basically but then Fiona had a dream that I did um, lessons from a mighty oak tree and when I reread it it was everything that has happened to me like an answer or an affirmation of everything that I've experienced over the last few months so as many of you know, I've been going back to school and been in school. This semester was really difficult for me. It always, between work, travel, being sick, whatever, I was always behind the eight ball. So I was always stressed out, coming home, doing hours of homework to try and get ahead of the curve. When I get ahead of the curve, I would always just um, fall behind because a new lesson would open up. And then uh, work, you know, has been playing into that. So um, there were many times I wanted to give up and didn't so um and then when i like i said when i reread this lessons from a mighty oak it resonated with me this morning so that's what my sermon is about so number one and there's 13 lessons that i put together um and this one took me like i think this is the sermon that took me like over two years to write because it kept coming to me over time so lesson one thrive to grow wherever you land no matter where you end up make it home most species of oaks live over 200 years. There are certain trees that can survive over a thousand years. An oak tree planted during the reign of King John managed to survive 800, and 800 years and reign of 15 or 35 rulers. And I think there's actually a tree in uh, England that it's actually well, well over 1200 years old, the uh, oak tree. Uh, think of how powerful that is. Those trees started out as a single acorn and once they took root, they remained in that location their whole lifetime, whether it was 800 years or a thousand. So just remember that even if plans don't work out the way you intended, make the most of where you land. Number two, don't rush it. It'll turn out the way it intended. The fruit of the oak tree is called an acorn. Production of acorns in an oak tree start at the age of 20 to 50 years in the tree's lifetime. Sometimes slow progress is worth the outcome. Remember, slow progress is still progress, even though it may seem like it not seem like it at the time. The mightiest oak in the forest may be 200 years old or older, but it doesn't grow that big and tall in a day, a week, or even a year. Sometimes we just need to let nature take its course and let it work out. In today's age, it seems like everyone's in a hurry all the time, and sometimes we just need to sh slow down and take a break. And this is the end of the semester this week. The semester ends tomorrow. And then the next semester starts on Monday. Well, we get two personal days a year at work. And Tuesday, I had no meetings and I didn't feel like working. So I took a personal day and I did absolutely nothing for the first time in like weeks. I did whatever I wanted. So that's what they're there for. So uh, number three, don't quit. Oaks produce 
more than 2,000 acorns every year, but one in one ten thousand will manage to develop into an actual oak tree. The rest will get eaten, fall to the ground, and decay and become fertilizer. Similar to when Thomas Edison was inventing the light bulb, he had over 3,000 attempts before he finally invented the light bulb. Every single thing he tried didn't work. In fact, he has a quote that he discovered like 10,000 ways not to make a light bulb. Imagine if he had just given up. Would we have light bulbs today? Maybe. Or would we be still using gas lamps? Thomas Edison also once said, our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try one more time. Um, and then here, Thomas Edison was asked how many times he failed to create a single light bulb. His answer was, I have not failed. I just found 10,000 ways it wouldn't work. When you feel like quitting or giving up, remember our seventh principle. We affirm the moral responsibility of the individual and that we make our own happiness or unhappiness as we obey or disobey nature's physical and spiritual laws. Instead of giving up, maybe try just one more time, but instead of thinking it won't work or it isn't going to go the way I want, say, I got this, or I know this will work out in my favor. Don't put out a negative vibration. Remember, like attracts like. Remember, it's our choice to be happy or not. Number four, when your roots run deep, you can sustain anything. The wood in the oak is very strong and hard. It is used for the manufacturing of ships, furniture, foreigns, and even Yamaha uses it in their drum kits. Jeremiah 17, seven through eight says, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots to the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. The roots of the tree grow down and out in search of water. In fact, if you were to take a tree and remove all the root or the dirt around the roots, the root system looks just like the branches. An oak tree requires up to 50 gallons per day to survive of water. Just as a tree sends out its roots in search of water and doesn't fear the drought, we too should let our roots run deep without fear, knowing that God is with us along the way. While it may not seem like it at the time, well, God will only put us in a situation that we will be able to handle. Number five, stand your ground. When your roots run deep and strong, it's easier to sustain pretty much anything that comes your way. Have you ever really sat and watched the trees the way they move in the wind? A few years ago, when we were doing nature therapy walks, I felt compelled. It was a really windy day. I think it was like Good Friday. And it was one of those typical April fronts that come through and just the, wee, the wind is blowing and howling. And I walked up and there was this huge oak tree in the nature center we were at. I put my hands on it and you could feel this thing flex. And this tree was like 75 feet tall and you could feel it swaying and you could feel every fiber just straining. Um, but I could feel the energy coming off that just fighting that wind. And it was pretty like profound moment. It was like, I just sat there for like two minutes feeling this tree sway. And this, like the trunk was two or three feet in diameter. And it was amazing that this thing could flex that much. And so the closer you got to the ground, the less you could feel it. So if you started like two feet up, you could barely feel it three feet, a little bit more, four feet and all the way up. And as high as I could reach, I could, you know, feel it more and more. It was pretty evidence that its roots ran deep because this tree didn't even topple over or would not have toppled over. Uh, because of the strength of the wood, oak is a natural plant or national plant of many countries through USA, England, France, Germany, and Latvia, Poland, and the Serbs. It symbolizes strength and endurance. Number six, bend when you have to, but only enough to let it pass. We've all heard the term pick your battles, and sometimes it's better to bend a little bit than just to give in or fight it. During a snowstorm, uh, pine trees tend to become overloaded. We've all seen the branches whoop, 
droop with snow. And if you've ever really watched it, at a certain point, the trees bend enough that the snow slides off and the branches will spring right back to their natural position. So sometimes when we're confronted with a situation that just overloads us, it's often best to just bend a little enough to release that burden and let it go. And let it go, it, it, shoo, it will pass, it too will pass. Seven, it's okay to shed some items when they no longer serve you. In the fall, trees shed their leaves to prepare for the winter. This is due to the fact that there's not enough sunlight in our area at least to sustain the process of photosynthesis, which is light and it makes the leaves appear green. It also takes a tremendous amount of energy to feed all those leaves. A mature oak tree can have as many as 200,000 leaves. And if you've ever lived with an oak tree in your backyard, you know, because you've had to rake them multiple times. And they don't fall all at once. They fall over a course of about eight weeks. So during the fall and winter months, a tree will start to will shed its leaves so it no longer serves a purpose. They no longer serve a purpose because they can't produce that energy, so they store the energy. And as soon as those leaves fall, if you really pay attention, as soon as those leaves fall, buds will appear. They're very, very tiny. It's not like they go dormant. They're actually shed the leaves and start producing those buds. And if you really watch, that's how you can tell how close you are to spring because in January you'll start to see the buds and then they'll get bigger and bigger. So you can tell like if they're slow growing, we're gonna have a later spring. If they're faster, usually we have an early spring. Uh, so during the fall winter months, a tree will shed its leaves because they no longer serve a purpose. If you really pay attention, within a couple months of shedding all its leaves, a tree will grow new buds. There is no break in the cycle. It just keeps going and going and going. And just as the tree sheds what no longer serves us, we should get rid of what no longer serves us. By getting rid of what no longer serves us, we open ourselves up to new possibilities and new growth. When that new growth eventually no longer serves us, we can shed that as well and allow ourselves to receive even more growth. The cycle just never stops. Eight, growth happens from the inside out. A tree grows from the inside out. That's why when we cut across the tree, we see the rings. Each new ring is new growth. The bigger the tree, the more rings it'll have, the more growth it has. To grow as an individual, it starts with our desire to grow. Our eighth principle states, we affirm that the doorway to reformation is never closed against any soul here or hereafter, meaning that we can always change to better ourselves. Every moment is a new beginning. Maybe today is a bad day, but we know it's up to us to make the next moment even better. Start a new ring in your life. Number nine, your heart should run the length of your trunk. The innermost part of the tree is called the heartwood. In the heartwood, the heart runs the entire length of the tree and provides a mean for water and nutrients to flow from the roots all the way back up to the leaves similar to the seven chakras in the body. The chakras are pathways in the body that the energy travels. There's three below the heart, three above the heart. They must all work together to keep the energy flowing. If there's a blockage in one of the chakras, the energy can't get to where it goes and can run into and can cause issues. Just like if the tree can't get water to a particular branch because of damage or a blockage, the pathway's blocked, and compromised or compromised, the blockage will and the branch will eventually begin to wither and die. And by doing that, it's actually protecting the tree. But um, if it sustains enough in the heartwood, it'll actually kill the tree. Number 10, take a chance and go out on a limb. Have you ever watched a squirrel go all the way out to the branch, the end of the branch, and hang on for dear life? They do this because that's where the acorns get the best sun and grow. But by doing this, they're also putting themselves at harm or risk from a hawk or an eagle or any prey or bird of prey, um, all in the reward for the best acorns. Sometimes we just have to take a chance and go out of our comfort zone to get what we want. 
Number 10, don't be afraid to branch out. Trees need sunlight to grow, so they grow as tall and wide as they can to take advantage of the sun. The taller they grow, the more branches they will have, the more leaves, which means more food for the tree. By expanding our horizons and reaching for the sky, the possibilities are endless. Number 12, support the local community. Most of the acorns an oak tree produces will fall to the ground and become food for a wide variety of animals, deer, squirrels, rodents, bear. They'll all eat the acorns. An opening in the trunk of the tree becomes a perfect spot for a nest. No matter how much you have, always give back. Go through clothes you no longer want and donate them to a local charity. Donate your time at a local food shelter. Volunteer at your church. Trust me, we need plenty of volunteers. We have, we have enough work to keep everybody busy for a while. Number 13, a tree is a tree regardless of its bark and leaves. There are approximately 600 different types of oak trees. Oaks have leaves that can be lobed, serrated, or flat on the edges. Certain species have leaves with bristles. White oaks and red oaks can be neighbors in cohabitat absolutely fine. Oak, maple, pine trees are just that. They're all trees. They all have trunk, bark, branches, and use the sun for energy. No matter the differences in appearance, they are all known as trees. Even though they're all different, they all reside next to one another peacefully and without issue. Don't we all wish that everyone on earth could put aside our differences and live peacefully as well? And in wrapping up, just as we may be only one person, we are filled with unlimited opportunities to grow and become like a mighty oak. Thank you for listening today.